The Battle of Kok was the final battle in the invasion of Poland at the beginning of World War II in Europe. It took place between 2 the 5th of October 1939, near the town of Kok, in Poland, 1284. The Polish Independent Operational Group, Polesia, led by General Franciszek Kleberg, fought the German 14 Motorized Corps, led by General Gustav Anton von Wiertesheim. Chapter 1 before the battle. The Polish battle plan was disorganized due to few officers being available. The Wehrmacht had destroyed the Polish reserve and forced it to withdraw. Having taken heavy losses, the Polish armies retreated to Krakow and the Vistula River. From there, they took the route from Warsaw to Sandomierz. From Sandomierz, they were able to move on to the Lublin area. The eastern edge of the Vistula was defended by Lublin's weak army. The Polish forces were only camped in areas where they could cross the river easily. Other German forces advanced to the Vistula and went on towards Zamosk and Volodymyr Wilinski. The Polish army at Krakow and Malopolska suffered heavy losses, and did not reach the San River front. Therefore, they were unable to organize a proper defense. Marshal Rides Smigli was tasked with the defense of southern Poland. The commander of Army Area 9 Brzezisk, General Kleberg, was responsible for the defense of the line from Pińska to Brzezisk. Chapter 2 Group Organization On 8 September, General Kleberg received orders from Marshal Rides Smigli to organize a division of infantry from the depot division. General Kleberg was also ordered to organize a defensive line from Brzezisk to Pińska. While his forces were well trained, they lacked heavy equipment as it had previously been dispatched to the front line divisions. Chapter 3 Battle of Brzezisk Litwski and Korbrin After breaking through the Polish line in the Battle of Wisna, the German 19 Army Corps under General Heinz Guderian started its rapid advance south. The Corps, composed of the 3rd Panzer Division, the 10th Panzer Division, the 20th Motorized Infantry Division, with the 2nd Motorized Division in reserve, was ordered to capture the old fortress in brzezisk litwski and then strike further southwards towards Kowal and Galicia. The purpose of this attack was to cut Poland in two and paralyze the defenses east of the Bug River. Initially, Guderian's forces advanced almost unopposed. However, on 14 September, they were stopped in the area of Brzezisk Fortress and Korbrin by a four-battalion strong improvised force under General Konstanty Plisovsky. In the three-day-long battle, which became known as the Battle of brzezisk litwski both sides suffered significant casualties. Although the Popoles finally withdrew from the area on 17 September, the Germans did not start the pursuit soon enough to rout the retreating Poles. The simultaneous attack on Korbrin, which is sometimes referred to as the Battle of Korbrin, was inconclusive, with the Polish improvised Korbrin Infantry Division under Colonel Adam Epler withdrawing unopposed. Both Polish units from Korbrin and Brzezisk were soon joined by the Podlaska Cavalry Brigade. The unit, commanded by General Ludwik Kamichitz Skrzynski, successfully evaded encirclement by withdrawing through the Biawoyaza forest. General Kamichit Skrzynski, with his chief of staff, Major Julian Sykiewicz, went to Wałkowusk where he made telephone contact with General Kleberg. The two agreed to join their forces and move southwards, towards the Romanian bridgehead. The 16th Motorized Infantry Regiment with artillery and Luftwaffe support, began an attack on the positions of the 83rd Polish Infantry Regiment on 18 September, capturing a number of Polish positions. The Polish counter-attack, which began at 17.00 hours, regained some territory. General Kleberg began withdrawing his forces to Romania and Hungary. Over the next two days Polish forces were ordered to concentrate north of Kowal. While on the march, a formation of the Polesia group was attacked by 5th columnists and from the air, but loose groups of Polish soldiers joined the group. After a battle with Red Army forces, General Kleberg decided to march to the relief of Warsaw on the 22nd of September. 
he first planned to capture crossing places on the Bug River. The concentration area would be near Wadawa. Formations, organized by Colonel Brazoza Bratzazina, fought only against the Germans. They could fight the Red Army but only if they, the Poles, were attacked first. Between 22 and 25 September, elements of the Palesia group were attacked by German aircraft during the march to Wadawa. On the last day of these attacks, General Kleberg received information that Wadawa had been captured by unknown Polish units. Most personnel were soldiers, from destroyed Polish formations who had not been caught by the Germans and were looking for commanders and formations which still fought. His staff began organizing the defense of a bridgehead in Wadawa. Elsewhere, between 17 and 26 September, formations of the Palesia group crossed the Bug River and entered an area near Wadawa. After receiving information about the surrender of Warsaw, General Kleberg asked his commanders their opinion after informing them of the political and military situation. He also asked General Zygmunt Podhorsky, the commander of the Zaza Cavalry Division, two infantry battalions and divisional artillery, to join him. General Podhorsky agreed, but then decided that he would first go to Starwy near Deblin, the location of the main arsenal of the Polish army. They would then move to the Holy Cross Mountains, and engage in guerrilla warfare. Kleberg decided to reorganize his command. The Corbrin Division would get little in the way of resupply but would be renamed the 60th Infantry Division. The Brazoza and Droixin groups would be merged, Colonel Brazoza Bratzazina would command the resultant 50th Infantry Division with three infantry regiments and a division of artillery. The 60th Infantry Division would be commanded by Colonel Adam Epler, comprising, three infantry regiments, a division of artillery, a motorized company of 37mm anti-tank guns, four independent and seven independent formations. In all, Kleberg had some 18,000 men. On 28 September, the Polish forces began to march south to the Parksiewoczyskow line with the Zaza Cavalry Division securing the march. One of the Ulan regiments from the Edward Brigade successfully crossed the Wieprz River and captured Spicin, another cavalry regiment from the Zaza Division captured Joids and Weimislo after some resistance. The Germans suffered heavy losses. The next day there was more fighting between the Zaza Division, and the Germans near Spicin. That evening, the 60th Infantry Division made contact with the Germans and entered a forest near Cheremniki. The Germans, using a formation of infantry and supported by two tanks, attacked the 1st Battalion, 182nd Infantry Regiment unsuccessfully. By 30 September, Polish forces were situated between the rivers Tizmenica and Wieprz. The following day, forces from the Polesia Group passed the Swiedeki colonies of Bieszczyca, Wola Osowinska, Belczak, and Ostrowik. The Zaza division had settled in forests near the Tizmianka River. One squadron of the 2nd Ulan Regiment, who were defending a road, destroyed a German reconnaissance patrol. The command element of 5th Ulan Regiment, and the Olok and Wilk Infantry Battalions attacked the Germans in Kok and captured the town. Chapter 4, Battle of Kok On 30 September, the commander of 10th Army, Walter von Reichenau, ordered his staff to plan the destruction of a large Polish force which was located between the Bug and Vistula rivers. This task would involve the 14th Motorized Corps. It was made up of the 29th Infantry Division, the 13th Motorized Infantry Division, and some independent units. Each German motorized division had a paper strength of 16,445 soldiers, 2,676 trucks and staff cars, 1944 motorcycles, and 18 armored cars. Chapter 4 Section 1, The 2nd of October General Gustav Anton von Wiertesheim, the commander of the 14th Motorized Corps, knew that Polish forces were situated in the forests northwest of Kok. He believed that the commander of the Polish forces was unaware of Warsaw's capitulation. The commander of the 13th Motorized Infantry Division, General Lieutenant Paul Otto, 
was of the opinion that the Polish forces had become so demoralized that they were incapable of combat, and that a single German battalion would be enough to disarm the Poles and take them to a prisoner of war camp. General Otto sent a force consisting of 3rd Battalion, 93rd Motorized Infantry Regiment supported by 8th Battery, 13th Regiment of Light Artillery. The battalion commander decided to divide his forces into two groups which were sent to Serra and Koch. He could count on help from the 93rd Motorized Infantry Regiment with some support forces which followed him. Chapter 4 Section 1 Subsection 2 Koch At 8.30, a column of half-tracks and truck-mounted infantry came under fire from a guard platoon of No. 2 Company of the Wilk Battalion. After a protracted engagement the German troops withdrew. The Polish 179th Infantry Regiment, was alerted and moved, to defensive positions near and in Koch. At about 11 o'clock the German lead elements attacked the Polish positions, which were now two battalions, strong. In spite of supporting artillery fire, the attack failed. At Tusk German motorcyclists appeared near the church in Koch and began firing, but subsequently withdrew when the fire was returned. Chapter 4 Section 1 Subsection 3 Serra A company of motorized infantry entered the village of Serra This led to the beginning of a chaotic action between the Germans and Ullans from the Pils Cavalry Brigade. The Poles were supported by an artillery unit from the same brigade. The Germans were forced to withdraw to the south of the village. Chapter 4 Section 1 Subsection 4 Casualties German losses were 300 to 400 killed and wounded. Five officers, 180 NCOs and privates were captured by the Polish. Components of the Pils Cavalry Brigade lost about 200 killed or wounded. Chapter 4 Section 2, The 3rd of October the stiff Polish resistance forced General Otto to use all his forces for an assault. He was going to split Polish forces in two and destroy them. He decided that the 33rd Motorized Infantry Regiment supported by part of the divisional artillery would attack Anapol, Pienki, and Talksin. This force was tasked with destroying the Polish 50th Infantry Division. The 93rd Motorized Infantry Regiment was ordered to capture Serra and then Horde's ears, and to destroy a defensive formation of the Zaza Cavalry Division. The 66th Motorized Infantry Regiment entered the field of battle in the afternoon. General Kleberg thought that the main German advance would be toward the Zaza Cavalry Division at Serra slash Horde's ears. He decided that part of the cavalry would fend off the German attack. The rest would join a counterattack alongside the 50th Infantry Division on the right wing and rear of the 13th German Motorized Infantry Division. The 60th Infantry Division, and the Podlaska Cavalry Brigade would close off potential German attack routes. If this counterattack was successful, the German division would be forced, to withdraw behind the river Wieprus. Between 7.50 and 9.30, two regiments of the 50th Infantry Division, attacked. They were supported by a howitzer battery. The attack was commanded by Lt. Col. Gorskowski. Initially successful, the Polish units were halted and then forced onto the defensive. The cavalry attack by the Ullans was also stopped and forced to withdraw west of Wola Gulaska. At 10.30, German artillery began to fire on Polish cavalry positions. The 93rd Motorized Infantry Regiment began an attack on the Wilk Battalion positions, inflicting heavy losses. The 33rd Motorized Infantry Regiment began a gradual attack on the Polish 50th Infantry Division. After heavy fighting, the German advance was stopped. General Otto decided to support the 33rd Motorized Infantry Regiment, with the 2nd Battalion of the 66th Motorized Infantry Regiment. German formations captured Wolagulowska, but in the evening, they were forced to withdraw from the eastern part of the area and go on the defensive in the west part. Chapter 4 Section 3, The 4th of October 
Due to the 13th Motorized Infantry Division's failure, General von Wiertesheim was forced to use the 29th Motorized Infantry Division. General Otto ordered the 93rd Motorized Infantry Regiment to move from the Weeprus River to Deblin. The 66th Motorized Infantry Regiment would attack Adamo and Vorlagulaska, and the 33rd Motorized Infantry Regiment would clear the area to the north of Kok. General Kleberg suspected that the main combined attack of the 13th Motorized Infantry Division and the 29th Motorized Infantry Division would be on Adamo and Krasivda. He thought there was a chance to destroy the 13th Motorized Infantry Division as they had already sustained heavy casualties and materiel losses. The Zaza Cavalry Division, and the 50th Infantry Division would defend their positions, the 60th Infantry Division would attack the 13th Motorized Infantry Division. The Podlaska Cavalry Brigade would oppose the 29th Motorized Infantry Division. In the morning, the main elements of 13th Motorized Infantry Division attacked the Zaza Cavalry Division and the 50th Infantry Division. By 12 o'clock noon part of the 66th Motorized Infantry Regiment had captured Zakpi and advanced on Adamo where they were halted by the 1st Battalion of the 180th Infantry Regiment. About 11 hours apart, first from the west and then the east, forces from the 66th Motorized Infantry Regiment attacked the Olok and Wilk battalions who were defending Chana. The defenders sustained heavy casualties from artillery fire and Wilk was forced to withdraw to the eastern edge of the Adamo forest. Olok, moving to Adamo, later deployed to Gullo. Between 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock formations of the 66th Motorized Infantry Regiment attacked formations of cavalry from the 5th Ulan Regiment who then withdrew from Vola Gulaska and Adamo to the southeast. At about 12 o'clock the 66th Motorized Infantry Regiment attacked the 2nd Squadron of the 2nd Ulan Regiment in Zarzex which withdrew with heavy casualties. The commander of the regiment moved the 4th Squadron south from Helenau to try to assist the 2nd Squadron, while the 3rd Squadron held the enemy to the west of Vola Galaska. The 3rd and 4th Squadrons, with elements of the 10th Ulan Regiment fought near the Terzistwo village cemetery, and the church in Vola Galaska. Ground was lost and regained repeatedly until an attack by the 2nd Battalion, 184th Infantry Regiment, and the Ulan Squadron enabled the Polish to dig in. Chapter 4 Section 4, The 5th of October General von Wiertesheim decided that he would use two of his divisions. They would attempt to encircle and destroy the Polish forces. The 13th Motorized Infantry Division advanced on Bischitza and Adamo then now were Roblina and Stanin, the 29th Motorized Division advanced on Radoris Kashalny and now were Roblina where they met troops from the 13th Motorized Infantry Division. General Kleberg decided to destroy the 13th Motorized Infantry Division by using forces from the 50th and 60th Infantry Divisions and the Zaza Cavalry Division. The Podlaska Cavalry Brigade defended the position under Radar is Kashalny and now were Roblina. Chapter 4 Section 4 Subsection 2 Fighting in Wodzyskow, Gullo, and Adamo The 13th Motorized Infantry Division's artillery began to fire on the 180th Infantry Regiment Battalion's positions in Adamo and the Olok Battalion in Gullo Grange at 5.30. Two and a half hours later, the 66th Motorized Infantry Regiment's advance began. After a short fight at 10 o'clock, the Germans captured Adamo, they then attacked the Polish position on Hill 170 and Gullo, which they captured after heavy fighting. The 66th Motorized Infantry Regiment took many losses. The division occupied positions on the eastern edge of Adamo Forest. General Podhorsky sent the Pils Cavalry Brigade to support them. After contact with the enemy brigade, they began an attack on the German positions in the forest. They captured the forest and, there, they established defensive positions. After the capture of Adamo and Gullo Grange by the 66th Motorized Infantry Regiment, the 33rd Motorized Infantry Regiment began to advance, capturing Wojciechow and Glyn. The Polish 178th Infantry Regiment withdrew. 
The commander ordered his force to retake Wojciechow and Glin, which they did, but they withdrew after taking heavy losses. The advance of the 180th Infantry Regiment on Adamo failed. Colonel Brazoza Brzezina sent the 178th Infantry Regiment who soon met the German advance. The 1st Battalion included a part company of sappers. The 2nd and 3rd Battalions took heavy losses and withdrew to Berzik. Meanwhile, an attack by the Polish 184th Infantry Regiment, with the support of a battalion of the 179th Infantry Regiment, recaptured the church and cemetery in Wola Galaska. An advance by the 182nd Infantry Regiment with the help of three 100mm howitzers broke the German defense in Helenau. At 1600 hours, the last German advance from Adamo began on positions of the 10th Ulan Regiment in Krizibda Forest by the 182nd Regiment in Helenau and the 184th Regiment in Vola Galaska. The 10th Ulan Regiment, after a hard fight, withdrew into the forest. Most forces of the Brazosa Division successfully defended their positions in Berzik. The 182nd Infantry Regiment held their position. The 184th Regiment had to withdraw due to a lack of artillery ammunition. During this time two key Polish advances began. The 2nd Battalion of the 183rd Infantry Regiment, with artillery support, began an assault with the bayonet on the Germans who had attacked the southern wing of the Pils Cavalry Brigade. The assault succeeded and the Germans began to retreat, being chased by infantry and cavalry. The rear of the southern wing of the 13th Motorized Infantry Division was attacked by the Edward Cavalry Brigade, they captured the village of Poznan, including a German artillery battery. Elements of the 13th Motorized Infantry Division began to withdraw. One of the last attacks was by the 29th Motorized Division on the Podlaska Cavalry Brigade positions and the rear of the Brazosa Division. After that both Polish formations withdrew to the south of Krzywda. At 1630, General Kleberg gave his last order in Hordziska, and then, as the Hordziska forest was being shelled, returned to his headquarters in Krzywda. At 2040, Lieutenant Colonels Kazimir Eszgorskowski and Tadeusz Smigielski left to establish contact with the command staff of the 13th Motorized Infantry Division. They made contact with the Germans near Adamo, and both sides agreed to a ceasefire lasting until 6 October at 6 o'clock, before which time a surrender was to be concluded. 15 independent operational group Pelesha surrendered on 6 October at 10 o'clock. In his last order, General Kleberg wrote that the reason for his decision to capitulate was that they were surrounded and ammunition and food were depleted. General Kleberg's ceremonial surrender took place on 6 October at the Jablonovskich Palace in Kok, 16-17.